Hey everybody, what's going on? Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever time of day you're watching today. Sasha here. It's Wednesday, so you know what that means. Another episode of Wellness Wednesday. And today, folks, yes, you're looking at a picture of a Greyhound bus. Because like I said, this past weekend, I was taking a short little vacation to... Georgia and you know the trip going up was continuous and the trip coming back we had a layover and a connecting route but the reason why I bring this picture up is because what are you doing on this bus for the majority of the trip you're sitting right well, hopefully you're sitting. Um, and, you know, sitting down is nice. We do it a lot, majority of the day, uh, depending on the profession. But can there be an instance where we sit too much? Yes. So, I actually have a article... I thought it was an interesting read. I'm not really familiar with Healthline, but I skimmed this article already. And I just thought it was something interesting because majority of the jobs here in America, or just in general, worldwide, you're usually doing some form of sitting for a prolonged period of time. And there are some consequences to that if you do not do anything to alleviate, you know, your body from being in that stasis. So we're just going to go over really quick what's going on when you're conditioning your body to sit for a prolonged period of time. Okay, so this article is 10 things that happen when you sit down all day. And number one, so you're weakening your legs and your glutes. For those of you who don't know, your glutes, pretty much the muscles around your butt, your that make up your butt for the most part. We're talking lower body. <clears throat> so you weaken your legs and your glutes. Sitting, you're not really using those muscles. So naturally, you're weakening your legs and your glutes. Weight gain. So, moving causes your muscles to release molecules like lipoprotein lipase. Well, you know, it's kind of intense, but just take it as face value. It's a molecule, which helps you process the fats and sugars you eat. When you spend most of your day sitting, the release of these molecules is lessened and your rear end is at greater risk of widening, according to research. You're also at greater risk for metabolic syndrome, even if you exercise. One study found, unsurprisingly, that men who spent more time sitting than usual gained more weight around the middle, which is the most dangerous place to store fat. Okay, number three, tight hips and a bad back. As with your leg and glute muscles, your hips and back will suffer from sitting. Sitting causes your hip flexors to shorten. Mm, I'm not really into kinesiology or like exercise study. That's the nice way of putting kinesiology. But flexion and extension are ways that your muscles can move um, that determine your range of motion. So... If your flexors, the muscles that allow your particular, well, is it muscles? 
but hip flexors allow the hips to perform flexion and extension. So if those muscle fibers are shortened, then you can't really move your hips. So that's what that's saying. And your heated, or excuse me, heated, huh? and your seated position can also hurt your back, particularly if you have a bad posture, which I do, I have to fix that, or don't use an ergonomic chair. Also, poor posture while sitting can cause compression on the discs in your spine and can lead to premature degeneration, which results in the chronic pain. That's not good, of course. Anxiety and depression. Lesser understood than some of the physical effects of sitting are the mental effects. Both the risk, oh, excuse me, but the risk of both depression and anxiety are higher in people who sit the most. This could be because the mental health benefits of fitness are lacking when one spends their day sitting down rather than moving. If so, these risks could be mitigated with regular exercise. You know, you never would think to link mental health with the lack of movement, but know, it may they may be connected in one way or fashion. That's interesting. Okay, cancer risk. <clears throat> Emerging studies suggest that prolonged sitting can increase your risk of certain types of cancer, including lung, uterine, and colon cancers. The reasons for this aren't entirely clear. The, the thing with cancer, well, this thing, this particular reason, it's a bit of a stretch, especially if they don't have, like, more, you know, convincing statements. I mean, cancer, there are like certain, you know, factors, environmental factors, genetic factors that we know can induce the risk of cancer. However, sitting... I mean, it could it could possibly be, but like I'm thinking that's a stretch. It's not. I wouldn't say it's not out of the blue, you know. But this is like sitting, and then you, you know, you have to have another factor introduced because there's plenty of um, folks that have these sitting all day jobs and they are not you know they are not predisposed to cancer so bit of a bit of a reach but okay that's the only start you know, criticism I have for these points. Just point number five in general. Okay, so now we're moving on to heart disease. Sitting can hurt your heart, potentially leading to cardiovascular disease. One study found that men who spent more than 23 hours per week watching television had a 64% greater risk of dying from cardiovascular disease than men who only watch television for 11 hours. Experts say people who that people who sit more have a 147% higher risk of suffering from a heart attack or stroke. Okay, this is just linked to lack of mobility. So, yeah, this one, this point I could see more than cancer. Because even the cancer point that was made by this article, it's, you know, it's like left up into interpretation. It's not drawing out the logic. 
as well as point number six does with the heart disease. So, like I said, some of these points, like, for different readers, they may take, like, what, what is presented at face value, but, like, somebody who's, like, more familiar with health and science and whatnot, they may be able to pick these parts, um, they may be able to pick these facts apart more, you know, concise and have a better interpretation. Because, you know, this is Healthline. This isn't like... I'm trying to think of a world-renowned health blog. Like, this isn't Harvard Health. This isn't um, PubMed. This isn't Mayo Clinic sort of deal. So, you know, like... My thing is take take it with a grain of salt because there's other factors rather than just sitting down. Like, I'll surmise what I'm saying at the end of the video. But, you know, just to bring it out now as I'm going through this with y'all. <sighs> okay, so let's keep it going with the diabetes risk. So again, this is dealing with the lack of mobility, people are not really moving, so diabetes is another thing that can occur with, you know, folks that sit down majority of their day. So it says here, people who spend more time sitting also have a 112% increased risk of diabetes. In one study that looked at the effect of just five days of bed rest, researchers saw an increased insulin resistance of precursor to diabetes. Yikes. So varicose veins is next. Sitting for long periods of time can cause blood to pool in the legs. This can lead to varicose veins or spider veins, which is a smaller version of varicose veins. Um, this is really a vanity sort of deal, but varicose veins can be indicative of a more serious condition, um, like blood clots in a rare instance. So not all the time do we take them for granted, but we definitely need to, you know, see that if the varicose veins are present we you know let the person who has them know like this gentleman right here that he needs to get up move around he can't sit all day he has to make sure that those varicose veins um you know just stay uh physical you know change <clears throat> excuse me can stay a physical change and not lead to Something like a precursor to a blood clot forming. Because that's not good. That's definitely not good. And we'll find out why with this next point, which is deep vein thrombosis. So deep vein thrombosis, or DVT, is a type of blood clot that is most common in the legs. When the clot is breaks off and it moves throughout other parts of the body that's called an embolism and like if it affects your lungs that's very dangerous um that's what you hear pulmonary embolisms or pe uh you're dealing with a medical emergency like this says um you get dvts from sitting sitting i think even standing and, um, with DVTs, you see, like, commercials for uh, medication, like, blood thinners, basically. And, um, but you don't want to do that. Like, if, if you can do it non-pharmacologically, that's the better thing because, you know, it's very simple to do. Um... Basically, to 
you know, prevent DVTs. You just, you take breaks, you stand up, you stretch your legs every so often, like every 30, 45 minutes. You can use compression stockings, which are available at your, you know, health support your healthcare supply store or even your pharmacy some walmart or well walmart has a pharmacy but some walgreens cvs maybe your local independent mom and pop pharmacy they should have these on stock because like if you you know ride the bus or whatever you know that gonna impede your leg room you're gonna want to invest in a compression stocking so that you don't you know run the risk of having those varicose veins or a dvt forming because you know like this article says like the experience i've seen you don't want a dvt Because then you'll have to be put on blood thinners and all that other stuff just to make sure that you don't have those blood clots forming. Okay, and the last point, stiff shoulders and stiff neck. Ooh. So, as with your legs, butt, and lower back, your shoulders and neck will offer... Well, we'll also suffer from prolonged sitting. This is especially true if you're hunched over looking at a computer screen. And yes, that is something I can definitely attest to. Um, Definitely have the stiff shoulders. Um, Doesn't help that I'm broad-shouldered. But I find myself having to get up every time we would, you know, have... A break, take that time to just stand up, stretch, because, um, yeah, it's not fun. Not fun with, um, not only your legs, butt, lower back tingles, the shoulders are particularly, you know, feeling some sort of way. And, yeah, I mean, it's not really something that, um, I could get used to, like, we're not meant, as human beings, we're not meant to be sitting for, like, oh, so long, just like we're also not meant to be standing for so long, we need to find a balance, and, um, yeah, I mean, a lot of your jobs in the office, or whatever, teaching, administrative, A lot of those jobs are basically sitting, I mean, you could argue that, well, some environments do offer, you know, a chance to get up and move around and what that, but for the most part, if you work in an eight-hour shift and you're sitting throughout most of the day, or you take in a long road trip, like the article has mentioned, like I've done. Take the time to get up and stretch. And, you know, just move around. Because it's scary how, like, some folks can neglect that and then they end up with, you know, some health complications just because they chose to ignore it. And it could have been prevent it could have been prevented if, you know, they just got up and stretched. They didn't go all that long with, you know, sitting, driving, riding, whatever. No, if you feel like any discomfort in your legs, back, shoulders, whatever, get up and stretch. Or just stretch in general. So yeah, y'all. I mean, yeah, during those bus, during the bus ride to and from, like, I, I didn't get up every time that we stopped, but I did get up majority of the times that we stopped because 
the Greyhound bus, y'all, it was still, like, uncomfortable. Like, my knees were touching the seat in front of me. And, um, it's like I'd rather not go through the motions like that. Just, I'm just gonna get up and stretch. And, yeah, I've done bus rides before, like I said. And, like, y'all, when I came out that, um, but when I came off that bus, and got to, you know, when I got off and got, you know, to my car or whatever, we loaded up our car, my legs and ankles were so swollen. And the latter half of that trip, y'all, the latter half of the trip was... um the shorter half of the trip. Like, the first half was, like, six hours. And then the latter half was, like, three-something hours. Like, three, four-ish hours. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, I mean, instead of the cancer point, like, they should put, like, oh, you know, you'll finally feel like, you know, if your lower extremities are swollen and, you know, there's fluid buildup in your legs and whatnot, it, it, it's not a good feeling. It's very uncomfortable and even scary to feel like, you know, my ankles, what they feel like if it's swollen and whatnot. And, um, yeah, I will probably never ride Greyhound again, but it was just a good learning experience. And, um, you know, it was just something I thought of while I was riding the bus and something that we usually take for granted is the lack of moving and good posture or, you know, Investing in a good chair, you know, um, I just, uh, I just got started in my career. So it's like, I want to make sure, like, I'll be standing for the majority, but like, if time permits, if my job permits, I will definitely be like sitting every maybe a couple of hours or so, you know, because, yeah, my job is the opposite, where you're on your feet for, you know, majority of the shift, like, 8 to 12 hours, so, it, that's just as bad, y'all, S- standing for prolonged periods of time is just as bad as sitting for prolonged periods of time, like I said, there's a balance to be had, and it should be had, <laughs> So, folks, that's going to do it for this week's episode of Wellness Wednesday. I want to thank you all for tuning in. Hopefully, you enjoyed watching this video as much as I enjoyed making the video. And any questions, comments, suggestions, or small talk, don't be a stranger. Leave it in my comment section below. Any and all are welcome. Greatly appreciated. Love to hear your thoughts and opinions. Um... Do you work at a job that, you know, you're sitting majority of your shift or standing majority of your shift or, you know, whatever the case may be? Um, do you find yourself taking a break? Do you get up and stretch? Do you sit down for a little bit? Um, you know, you got to think about all of that. But, folks, I am not done. I have another video that must be done and that is for the month of iced tea so i will see those of you interested in that very soon but for those of you that are looking forward to the next wellness wednesday that'll be next week y'all so until then take care make it a great day today and every day and until next video bye now